Good morning. Welcome you to our worship here at Tree of Life on this sixth Sunday of the Easter season. Today we're reminded that by Jesus' death and resurrection, we have a new relationship with our God, a relationship of love, which is continued to be nurtured and nourished by the Holy Spirit through both word and sacrament. We'll follow the order of service as it's printed in your service folder today. We welcome those who are worshiping with us via the internet as well this morning. Our service begins with our first hymn, four verses of hymn 377. May God bless us as we worship together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus has risen from the dead and brought salvation to all who believe. Death, Death no longer has dominion. dominion. Life, Life will reign eternally. eternally. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In this Easter season, we celebrate with joy the resurrection of our Lord from the grave. But we must confess that it was because of our sins that Jesus Christ, our Savior, went to his temporary tomb. O God, I, a poor sinner, confess to you not only that I have been conceived and born in sin, but also that throughout my life I have often and in many ways offended you, my Lord and Maker. I have done this in my thoughts, words, and actions so that you could, with perfect justice, reject and condemn me for all eternity. According to the promise of your word, I flee for refuge to your infinite mercy. I implore you, for the sake of my risen Savior, Jesus Christ, forgive me all my sins. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our transgressions. Our sins have been paid in full by the risen and victorious Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who has taken away the sins of the world. 
I as a called servant of Christ and by his authority forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father of lights, every good and perfect gift comes from you. Inspire us to think those things that are true and long for those things that are good, that we may always make our petitions according to your gracious will, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Our first scripture lesson for this sixth Sunday of Easter is a continuation of the lessons from the book of Acts, the uh, activity of the Christian church after Jesus' resurrection. And in these verses, we are reminded that there are many people in the world who don't know about God and need to be told. Paul found an opportunity to do that when he visited the city of Athens, Greece. We read. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. Now what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything, because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he determined the time set for them in the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. This is God's word. We'll join now in singing Psalm 66 as it's printed on page 6 in your book. Second 
lesson for this Sunday is recorded by Peter in his first epistle, chapter 3, verses 15 through 22. In these verses, Peter reminds us that we need to rely on our faith and to use that faith and be prepared to give an answer for that faith. We read from Peter's epistle. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the, for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water, and this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. This is God's word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Hallelujah. for this Sunday will be used as our sermon text, and I'll read it at that time. So let's continue now with the Apostles' Creed as we confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated. I invite our children to come forward. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Throughout the year, we have some special days or holidays. Can you think of some of the special holidays we have? Memorial Day. Memorial Day the holiday Valentine's we're having. Day. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Christmas. Christmas. Easter. Easter. Each of us has our own personal special day. Birthday. Mm -hmm. Anniversary. Yeah. What's your favorite holiday? Winter. <laughs> Winter. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite? Christmas, Easter, Memorial Day, Fourth of July? What's your favorite? Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. I like Fourth of July with fireworks and picnics. Me too. I'm scared of them. Okay, scared of them? Yeah. There's a lot of good holidays, but maybe one that we don't remember all the time is the one you mentioned Memorial Day. 
And memorial kind of means memory, right? We should remember it. Who knows what Memorial Day is a holiday for? For the people that die in the war. Yeah. We get to celebrate Christmas and Easter and all those things and live where we live and have the freedoms we have because there have been men and women that have fought in our military, our army, and other places in order to protect us, to keep us safe. And there's people that are doing that now, risking their lives for us. So we set aside Memorial Day, which is tomorrow, to remember what they've done for us. There's somebody else, though, that risked his life for us so that we can live in peace and safety. Yeah, Jesus did. And Jesus actually died for us, didn't he? Do we set aside a special day to remember what he did? Easter, when he rose from the dead. Good Friday, yeah. But really, we should thank Jesus every day for what he did, shouldn't we? Remembering that every day I get up and I can live in America and I can have all these freedoms and I can look forward to the 4th of July and to my birthday and Christmas because of what Jesus did for me. And I can look forward to even a greater celebration. Where do we get to go live one day? Yeah, and that's going to be so good, we can't even imagine it right now. It's going to be so perfect and wonderful, and we get to live with God. So tomorrow, I hope you spend a little time remembering those men and women. Maybe you don't know any of them personally, but who gave their lives to keep us free. And let that remind you of what Jesus did to keep us free, too, and protect us from our enemy, the devil, so that we can go live with him in heaven one day. Let's say a quick prayer to thank him now. Thank you, Jesus, for sacrificing your life to save us from our enemy, the devil. Thank you for guarding us and protecting us and keeping us free from sin and every evil so that we can one day celebrate with you in heaven. We pray in your name. Amen. There is Children's Sunday School today, so if you want to go back, you can certainly do so. And we'll continue with our next post video. <laughs>
Grace and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, through our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for us to consider is the gospel lesson for today from John chapter 14, reading verses 15 through 21. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. This is God's word. You may be seated. In the name of our gracious and merciful Savior, Jesus Christ, dear friends in Christ. During this Memorial Day weekend, we undoubtedly will see a number of things that people do to recognize and to thank those who have served us and served in our military and are serving. There may be parades that are held in honor of these men and women, or perhaps a special ceremony at a public place. I think every American should recognize the blessing that we have in these men and women who dedicate themselves to protecting us and upholding the freedoms that we have. But I think if you have somebody personally that you know, either a relative or a close friend, that either has given their life or is risking their life in order to save us, the holiday probably takes on a, a special meaning for you. Maybe you will later on Monday go out to a grave site and put some flowers on the tomb of one of those special people. And the day just means a little bit more to you because of that close connection you have with that person. As Christians, I believe that we all have a little stronger feeling about God than those who don't know God. Now, there are people that have a general feeling about a God and, and they respect that larger being that's directing the world in their lives, but they don't have that personal attachment to him, but through faith, which the Holy Spirit has given to us through word and sacrament, we do have that special attachment to Jesus, to God, to the Holy Spirit. And because of that special relationship that we have, we do feel close to God, and we find comfort from God, and for that reason, we should memorialize him, we should remember him every day of our life and thank him for what he's done for us. Our faith in God is a tremendous blessing. It's not something that we chose to bring into our life. It's not something that we work for and we deserve to have, but it's, it's something that God in his grace and mercy simply chose to put into our life. He chose us to be his children. And as his children, we enjoy the, the many spiritual and earthly blessings that come from God. Jesus himself talked about that special relationship through the pen of John. And in these words, we're going to consider that special relationship and what it means to us. We're going to see that, first of all, it's a very powerful relationship. And also that it's a very lasting, eternal relationship. After three years with his disciples, Jesus was nearing the time when he would be crucified and then rise and return to heaven. And he knew that that was going to cause some challenges for his disciples as they continued his work. So as he begins this discussion with them, he starts with what seems to be a rather obvious statement. He says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Well, if we love someone, if we respect them, we generally try to do what they tell us to do. We try to obey them. We try to listen to them. We try to obey as far as we can. Seems natural that the disciples would do that too, but, but what Jesus said goes a little bit deeper than that. When he said, if you love me, he used that special word for love, agape. That's that one-way love, that undeserved love. You see, for the past three years, the disciples had had a lot of reason to love Jesus. He had been with them. He had personally protected them from their enemies who were attacking their teachings and their doctrines. He had provided food for them. He had taken care of their sicknesses. 
He was a friend and certainly they loved him for that. But after Jesus returned to heaven, they would come under the direct attack of Satan who through his allies were going to persecute them, threaten them, throw them in prison and actually put to death 10 of them. Would you still love me under those conditions? Jesus was asking. When, when times get tough, will you obey what I command? Will you do what I tell you? Do you trust me enough? Do you believe in my promises enough? Do you recognize my love enough that even under those conditions, you'll do what I tell you to do and believe that I will be with you to keep you safe? Well, there's plenty of times and plenty of examples that we can turn to of people who loved Jesus and loved God when times were good. The feeding of the 5,000, when Jesus handed out that food, which the people hadn't brought for themselves, certainly probably brought a few claps and applause for Jesus and thank you for this and you, what a great guy you are. And a little later when Jesus stilled the storm on the Sea of Galilee, I'm sure the disciples all told them how much they appreciated that. And when Paul and Silas were set free from prison by that earthquake that God sent, they went to the home of a fellow Christian and they celebrated and thanked Jesus. Enoch and Elijah got to go into heaven without having to pass through the door of death and I'm, I'm sure they thought God was the greatest person in the world for doing that. And there are times in our lives too when everything's going good and yep, God is my best friend and I love God and I'll do whatever he wants me to. But what about when the difficult times hit? The road isn't always paved with those golden streets. It's not always a cakewalk through life but sometimes it's very difficult what about Peter being threatened because he was a friend and follower of Jesus? If you love me, you will obey what I command. I don't know him. I swear I don't know him. It wasn't that easy to agape love Jesus at that time. Or Job, who was blessed by God because of his love for God and had received many blessings when those blessings started to be taken away as a test. He was encouraged by his friends to simply curse God and give up, and he was close to doing that at certain times. Or perhaps we think of uh, Elijah. He had just won that tremendous duel with the Baal prophets. You'd think everyone would be turning to God now, but instead King Ahaz and Queen Jezebel put a bounty out on his head. He had to run into the desert, and finally he said, I've had enough, Lord, take my life. I'm no better than, any, than my ancestors. If you love me, you will obey what I command. I command you to trust me. I command you to come unto me when you're weary and burdened. Call upon me in the day of trouble. Cast your anxieties on me. And yet when difficulties arise, it's not always so easy to do that. We perhaps forget about the relationship that we have with our God and the benefits of that relationship and the power that we have because we're plugged into that divine power source in heaven. And so Jesus encourages us to love him, to trust him, to put our faith in him. And yet he also understood that because of our sinful nature and our weaknesses, we aren't always going to do that the way we should. And so as he always does when he gives us a command, he also provides the power for us to do so. He said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. Jesus, of course, was speaking about the Holy Spirit. And notice he didn't call him an advisor. An advisor is someone who kind of listens to you and has some suggestions, some advice. He didn't say he's a shoulder to cry on, someone that you can just lament to about how lousy your life is. He called him a counselor. A counselor is someone who has been trained to help you with the specific problem you have. And the specific problem that we often have is that we're being beat up by the devil and it's getting tough. And so Jesus said, when things get tough, and I still tell you to love me, God the Father will send a counselor, someone to give you the advice that you need, to share with you the information that you need so that you can endure those difficult times and not only endure them and get by, but actually grow through them. And the Holy Spirit does that by giving us God's word. He works through that word. He gives us the sacraments. He works through the sacraments to strengthen our faith. And as we face those challenges, then to continue to trust God and his promises. I'm sure that Jesus was thinking about what would happen when he left and went back to heaven. And the Holy Spirit came to the disciples when he was talking about the counselor coming to them. 
They were about to go out into the world that was very hostile. The devil, realizing that Jesus, their leader, was now no longer there for them, ramped up his attacks on them. Emperor Nero, the ruler of the empire at the time, declared Christianity illegal. And not only was it illegal, but if you got caught trying to promote it, you could be put to death. Ten of the eleven remaining disciples were put to death, and Jesus knew they were going to face that difficulty. So he said, go back to Jerusalem, and I will send the counselor to you. And when the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost, they were a different group. There was no more denying that they know who Jesus was. There was no more running and hiding behind locked doors to protect themselves. Peter, in fact, stood up, and we've been listening to the story from the book of Acts through the Easter season. He stood up and he pointed to the Jewish leaders and he said, God sent a Savior and you killed him. And yes, I'm calling you out. But he also said, if you repent and are baptized, you can be forgiven and you'll be saved. And on that day, 3,000 turned and came to faith. The other disciples went out with that same message, empowered by the Holy Spirit, plugged into that divine power source through the relationship that God had established with them. They spread that message in spite of the persecution. They were put to death, and by tradition, in some very unpleasant ways. But they were able to do that because of the power that the Holy Spirit brought to them. So the lesson, I think, is obvious. I don't know if you're ever going to stand in a courtyard surrounded by Jesus' enemies threatening to arrest you and crucify you too. I don't know if you'll ever be thrown into a den of lions because you confess Jesus as your Savior. But I know that the devil is going to do everything he can to try to break you from your faith. I know that the devil is going to battle every day to steal you away from God, to make you stop loving him and stop trusting his promises. And there are many in the world that have already fallen to the attacks of the devil. Jesus himself said the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. The devil has blinded people to the love of God and the power of God. But he went on to say, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. You have a relationship with him because he established that relationship. He came to you through the gospel, perhaps at the baptismal font. Maybe it was later on through the word. He continues to come to you through word and sacrament to nourish that relationship and to strengthen that relationship. And that's why I'm going to encourage you to be in church as often as you can because we use word and sacrament regularly. I'm going to encourage you to be in a Bible study where you can get to know and love your Lord more and more and begin to realize that you can trust him and his promises as you read through the stories of the Bible and see just what he was able to do for those who were in need and what he promises to do for you. I'm gonna encourage you to bring your kids to Sunday school and to confirmation class and to have devotions at home with them because that is where that relationship gets strength from God's word and God's sacraments and we need that strength from God because we need this relationship to continue to last until we finally join him in heaven if we dedicate ourselves to the means of grace the word and sacraments the tools he uses he makes a promise to us he says I will not leave you as orphans I will come to you before long the world will not see me anymore but you will see me because I live, you also will live. Now, Jesus knew that he was going to be leaving his disciples in a physical sense. He was going back to heaven. And as they went out and did the work they were being trained to do, it would become difficult for them. But Jesus promised them, I'm not leaving you as orphans. I'm not just sending you out on your own. I will be with you. On Pentecost, that Holy Spirit came to them and gave them that extra courage, that extra boost of faith. And throughout their ministries, they knew that Jesus was with them to the very end of the age. Jesus was making that same promise to all who through faith are united with him in that special relationship. But there are people in the world today who, who don't understand that relationship, who don't recognize it, who don't feel the love and strength of God. They may be looking for God, they're looking for some sign that God loves them, I guess that's why people get so excited when a potato chip in the shape of Jesus shows up in the bag of lays. Oh, there's my sign from God. He does love me. Here is a God. But they're missing all of the evidence that God puts out in front of them. Now, I know here in North Carolina, we don't get a lot of snow, but you, you get snow, and some of you grew up up north where we get buried in it. 
And if you think about it, it always amazes me. All of that snow is made up of billions and billions of little tiny snowflakes sent by God in which no two are exactly alike. That's not a very big canvas to work with, and yet God finds a way to make every single snowflake a little bit different. How smart do you have to be in order to do that? And yet, for God, it's no problem. And then we look at the rest of his creation, and we see the mountains, and we see the oceans, and we see the Grand Canyon and the rivers. We see the forces of nature and the tornadoes, and we realize the strength of God. We see the little flowers and how beautiful they are, and we understand the love of God. And when we're having those moments where it's difficult in our life, maybe we just walk outside and we see that little flower and we hear it shouting out, here I am, I'm your God, I'm with you. Just look around, I'm here for you. Look what I can do, look what I have done. I haven't left you as orphans, I'm with you every day. Every breath that we take is evidence of God's love for us because all of the elements are put together just right so that when we breathe them into our lungs, it keeps us alive. Without a God doing that, somebody controlling things, it could have fallen apart a long time ago. But God says, I will not leave you. I'm still here with you. And as you live your life in good times or bad, if you love me, you will obey what I command. You will listen to me. You will trust me. You will rely on me. And we'll walk together through life to that eternal home that I've prepared for you. It is difficult when the devil attacks us, and we know that he's going to attack us, but that faith opens our eyes to the love of God, and it makes us different people. Jesus says that when we finally get to heaven, we'll see clearly that eternal love of God. We'll understand even the teaching of the Trinity, how the Father can be in me and I in you. Hard for us to understand as humans, but in heaven we'll have that perfect wisdom and knowledge. And God says you will understand everything clearly. You will live in perfect peace and happiness. And that's all because I rose from the grave. And since I conquered sin and death for you, you also will live. And that's a very comforting thing. Obviously, the worst thing that can happen to us in this life is that we can die and lose our life. And for an unbeliever, that's a daunting and horrifying thought. But for the believer, it simply means you start the new chapter in heaven with God. And that's where that peace and comfort comes from. That there is nothing in this life that God cannot control and that God cannot help me over or through. And as long as he's with me, I have nothing to worry about. And yes, those difficult times will come. And there will be problems in our life and there will be challenges and it will be difficult and there will be sorrow but Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey what I command. You will trust me. You will remember what I've told you. You will turn to me and rely on me. And in the end, because I live, you also will live. On this Memorial Day weekend, it is good for us to stop and think about the people who have made the freedoms that we have possible. The joys that we have living in America without the fears that many others live with on a daily basis. We should remember those who sacrificed themselves and gave their lives for that, and also those who are continuing to protect us and serve our country. But how can we do that without thinking about everything that God has done for us too? The sacrifice that Jesus made so that eternally we are safe, the death that he died so that we might live, and let's remember that just as God has given Jesus to save us from our sins, he is also sending us out to help others recognize him as their savior from sin. We remember Jesus not just by worshiping and keeping him to ourselves, but sharing him with others. We thank Jesus by spreading the news of what he's done. And we trust that God then will keep his promise to us. I will be with you. I will send you the counselor you need. I will bless your work and souls will be saved. We pray that God bless us as we remember him and the relationship that we have with him. We ask that God would help us to better understand that relationship and the power that it offers to us, that we better trust in God and his promises, and that through his word and sacrament, he would keep us safe in that eternal relationship so that we can live with him in heaven. Amen. And the peace of God, which goes beyond our understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Our offerings to the Lord will now be given. stand for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we have a number of requests for special thoughts to direct to God. Uh, this past week, Michelle Strack was over in Michigan with her mother who passed away and has now been given that eternal life in heaven through faith in Jesus. So we pray for Michelle and her family that God would comfort them and bring them that peace of knowing of his promise to them. We also are asked to pray for Carolyn Kutsinka. She is one of our internet members uh, living in Maine. And on Thursday, she's going to have the battery in her pacemaker replaced. So we pray that God be with her. And finally, we've been asked to pray for a friend of Wendy and Mike Malone from Pinehurst, who, uh, whose son has been diagnosed with cancer. And we ask that the Lord would be with her and her son as they now uh, take on this challenge that's come into his life. Uh, David Burns is his name. So we pray. Dear God of all grace, we thank you for the gift of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. By his resurrection from the dead and by the faithful testimony of the apostles, you have assured us that our faith stands on a sure and solid foundation. Heavenly Father, we rely on that foundation of faith as we live our lives here on earth, faced with many of the challenges of sin and its consequences. We ask that you would be with Michelle Strack and her family to bring them peace as they mourn the loss of Michelle's mother. We know that by grace and through faith in Jesus, she is now a, a member of heaven, living there in the company of the angels at the foot of your throne. We thank you for that grace and mercy. We also realize that it's difficult, though, for those who are still here waiting to be called to heaven. We ask that you would be with Michelle and her family and give them understanding and peace and patience as they mourn the loss of this loved one. Heavenly Father, also be with Carolyn and be with David as they face these challenges which have come into their lives. We ask that you would give wisdom and understanding to the, the staff and nurses and doctors that are taking care of Carolyn and her procedure. We ask that you give wisdom to those who are treating David. If it is your will, grant them both healing, that they may return to their families and loved ones and continue to serve and thank you for all that you have done. All of these prayers we bring knowing that you have promised to hear us, if we call upon you in the day of trouble, you will answer us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that promise, and we thank you for sending your Son, in whose name now we also join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our next hymn.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms and placed all things under his feet for the benefit of the church. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he also took the cup gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always amen invited to come forward for the sacrament of the altar as you are directed by our ushers. Take an eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you until life everlasting. Depart in peace, your sins are forgiven.
this true body and blood of our Savior strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You can depart in peace. Stand and we'll join in the responsive closing litany. <coughs> well, living Lord, you rose on Easter to give new life to each one of us. Arise, Arise within, within us, risen Savior, 
so we may celebrate the joy of each new day. O living Lord, you rose on Easter to assure us of your presence. Arise within us, risen Savior, so we may know that you are always with us. O living Lord, you rose on Easter to declare victory over death. Arise within us, risen Savior, so we may not be afraid of the future. O living Lord, you rose on Easter to stand triumphant over sin. Arise within us, risen Savior, so we may know the power of your forgiveness. O living Lord, you rose on Easter to announce salvation to all. Arise within us, risen Savior, so that we may go and tell this good news to others. O living Lord, you rose on Easter to bless your people both now and forever. Arise within us, risen Savior, so we may find blessing in the promise of life everlasting. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We go in the power of Christ's resurrection. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Receive now the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we close with our final hymn. Good morning again to everybody.
Just a couple of uh, quick highlights from the bulletin. Um, we will not be having confirmation class today. I'll let you go home and enjoy the holiday weekend. I will be having our Clayton class on Tuesday night and then our regular class next Sunday, and that'll be the last class. Uh, there are some who are going to start a summer session, and we'll do that after our district convention on June 10th and 11th. On the uh, upcoming events, June 2nd, 16th, and 30th, we have our men's Bible study, the Wings and the Word Bible study at Jack's house. Uh, you're certainly welcome to join us if so inclined. We begin about 6.30 with a supper. June 10th and 11th is our district convention. The 12 districts of our synod will be meeting individually, preparing for next year's synod convention. This is one of the conventions where we have a lay delegate, and Jim Lucht is going to serve our congregation this year. We'll be heading over to Chesapeake, Virginia on the 10th and 11th. Then on the 29th of June, we're going to kind of start a new tradition here. Any month that has five Sundays, we're going to use that fifth Sunday to have a potluck dinner. Just an excuse to get together and eat, which Lutherans like to do. So this year, uh, that starts in June. The 29th is the fifth Sunday of the month, and being close to the 4th of July, we thought we would make it a red, white, and blue picnic-themed potluck dinner. So you can plan on those. Look at your calendar. If it falls in December, which it often does, we sometimes skip that. But any other time, there's a fifth Sunday of the month. We'll plan to have a potluck here at church. Are there any other announcements that anyone would like to make? No, uh, Kim. Did